I'd like to welcome the fake news. This just might be the biggest story of next year. CBS is no good. And in fact, in honor of you, I just sued CBS today because of 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes is under attack by Fat Donnie and friends because they didn't like the Kamala Harris interview and because Trump was too big a coward to go on the show. But now they want to sue CBS because even though they won the election, they so desperately want to be cool and desperately want to be liked. But hey, that's not on us. We offered a new theory. We will do large deportations from Springfield, Ohio. We're going to get these people out. We're bringing them back to Venezuela. But you can't make normal people like creepy people. I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. Your body, my choice. This is our last chance. <laughs> you know, <laughs> cocaine news. Donald Trump Jr.'s own cocaine. The RFK said doctors found a worm in his brain that had eaten part of his brain and then died. They're eating the dogs. We need a full investigation into just how many puppies were eaten alive on Fauci's watch. I'm straight up just saying we should not have women in combat. And what's really killing Trump is he didn't get the 50% of the vote he wanted so badly. And that mandate, not so much. Here's a trivia question for you. What do Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have in common? The answer, their popular vote victories are really similar. In fact, as of right now, it looks like Hillary Clinton's popular vote victory in 2016 is bigger than Donald Trump's popular vic vote victory in 2024, something I'm sure Trump world is thrilled we just said out loud. With me now, CNN senior, very senior, very senior data Super reporter senior. Harry Enten. Look, it is not common lately for Republicans to win the popular vote and the Electoral College vote. Correct. So Trump has something to celebrate there. But look, his popular vote margin shrinking. Yeah, the case that Trump's mandate isn't all that. Look, uh, if you look historically speaking, Donald Trump is now under 50% in the national popular vote, Ver barely under 50%, but he is under 50%. I want to take a look and compare, compare his popular vote victory to those historically speaking over the last 200 years. His popular vote victory ranks 44th out of 51. That ain't exactly strong. Some might argue that is weak, weak, weak in the words of Tony Blair. In fact, his popular vote win at this point is the weakest going all the way back. You have to go all the way back to 2000 to find a weaker one, a smaller popular vote victory than Donald Trump currently has. So yeah, Trump has won the popular vote, but it ain't all that, my dear friend. But now Trump's pick for the FCC is actively competing with the rest of Fat Donnie's cast of losers for the least knowledgeable cabinet pick. And this is a dark horse moving up fast. Perspective, there's a couple of top issues. Number one is looking at tech censorship. You know, free speech is the bedrock of our democracy. And there's been this unprecedented surge in censorship over the last couple of years. And we need to restore Americans' First Amendment rights. Number two is to look at our approach to media. You know, Jeff Bezos just recently did an op-ed where he said that uh, Americans don't trust the news media. He said now they're the least trusted of all. And I think he's speaking a lot of truth there. So I think the status quo, particularly when it comes to legacy media, needs to change. And three, we have a real opportunity to get the economy going and creating jobs. When President Trump came in in 2017, uh, we were behind the eight ball when it came to communications policy and he turned things around, and that's exactly what is gonna happen again. We need to free up more spectrum. We need to do permitting reform. You talk about rural broadband, that's the key there. What can the FCC do to help legacy media? You know, there's a lot the FCC can do. Uh, broadcasters are differently situated than other speakers. Uh, they get free access to a valuable public resource, the airwaves, and they're licensed by the FCC. And the uh, exchange for that is they have to serve the public interest. I think it's important that we take another look at that and we reinvigorate it. There's also a, a news distortion complaint at the FCC still um, having to do with CBS and CBS has a transaction before the FCC. And I'm pretty confident that that news distortion complaint over the CBS 60 Minutes transcript is something that's likely to arise mm -hmm. Uh, in the context of the FCC's review of that transaction. Okay, for starters, you pinhead, over-the-air broadcasts by local TV and radio stations are subject to very narrow speech restraints, but speech transmitted by cable or satellite TV systems aren't. And I mean, seriously, who watches TV with rabbit ears anymore? I mean, no one under, how old is Trump? 90% of the time, I have no idea what the f I'm talking about. And the FCC doesn't regulate online content. So the question is, does this hump even know what the First Amendment entails? Oh, hell no. 
Okay, the First Amendment guarantees us the right to criticize the government. That's pretty much it. And while I have no idea how much CBS edited out of the Harris interview, that's entirely up to CBS. There's no law against a private organization not saying something. And if there was a law against lying, shower time for Sean Hannity would take on a whole new meaning. I could be a friend to you. Fox lied repeatedly about the stolen 2020 election, the insurrection, the science behind COVID, immigration, voting machines, crime, Biden's mental health, Trump's lies about the border and his economic numbers. But don't take my word, just listen to him. And we should note everything you're gonna hear her say is a lie. We have demonstrable statistical and mathematical and computer evidence of hundreds of thousands of votes being injected into the computer systems repeatedly that simply don't, don't pass muster. The Department of Justice and the FBI really need to get after it right now and investigate all the reports of fraud. There are hundreds of them. Yeah, well, I hope uh, Attorney General Barr is doing that. We've got evidence of corruption all across the country in countless districts. The machine ran an algorithm that shaved votes from Trump and awarded them to Biden. They used the machines to trash large batches of votes that should have been awarded to President Trump. And they used the machine to inject and add massive quantities of votes for Mr. Biden. The only reason I we thought, really found thought, out how bad it was. I thought Democrats told us that we like whistleblowers. You're saying that these people can't talk because they're going to lose their job. Here to provide even more updates on the Trump campaign's efforts to restore election integrity, the attorney for the president, Rudy Giuliani. We left the communist state of New York. Uh... Trump and his crotch-sniffing sycophants want control over what we say about them. Boy, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> But the pesky old First Amendment comes into play, and the same rights that protect Laura Ingram from prison protect Leslie Stahl. But what differentiates Fox from CBS is the non-MAGA news reporters fight each other for the truth. When CBS gets it wrong, CBS, NBC, The New York Times, The LA Times, they're all there, ready to get it right. They battle each other to tell the truth. But Fox, Newsmax, and OAN, plus a dozens of right-wing incels like this guy? And the Civil Rights Act, though, let's be clear, created a beast, and that beast has now turned into an anti-white weapon. Their only battle is to please MAGA and Jizz Daddy, regardless of the truth. <laughs> Jeff Bezos' reluctance to have the Washington Post endorse Harris or anybody is a disturbing sign of what's to come. Cozy relationships between dictators and the media mean but one thing. The truth is in trouble. Wait a minute. Why are you forcing your lifestyle over on me? Who's forcing you to be gay? Uh, Joe Biden and his crew. Joe Biden's forcing you to be gay? No, not forcing me. I, make sure you get that right. I ain't gay and I ain't got nothing to do with you, okay? James Madison wrote the Bill of Rights. And while the First Amendment was followed by many more, few hold the significance of the freedom of one to speak truth to power. In a way, Mark Twain predicted Trump and his idiotic posse. He said, it ain't what you don't know that hurts you, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. I am the chosen one. It just ain't so. Damn right. This is not a normal election. Whether the women like it or not. Suck my fat one. This isn't their Republican Party anymore. Who's with me? Trust me. Shut the f up, Dan. Who's with me? Oh yeah, the lie. Indictable. Out of sheer morbid curiosity, I'm allowing this freak show to continue. I don't want to talk about this stuff. Do I, do I, do I, do I, Am I wrong? Yes. TikTok. You're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> I think he's crazy. I'm Chip Franklin. <laughs>